Welcome back, everybody, here to week one, day one of the 2020 Academy Summer Split. I'm Captain Flowers, this is Crumbs, and we've got Immortals vs. FlyQuest Academy coming up right around the corner, featuring a surprise guest that many of you would probably not expect. Uh, this is a shock, Flowers. <laughs> I'm just gonna wait for the graphic to reveal it, because... <laughs> right? Like... <laughs> Once you see it, guys, you're just gonna lose your mind, especially if you've been following Lee for a while. Notice the jungle position here, Forex Smithy. Definitely not what a lot of people would be expecting coming into this split. People who were paying attention on Twitter probably would have seen the Immortals roster announcement showing that Ixmithy was not going to be the starting jungler for the LCS squad, so you would naturally just think, okay, he'll probably be playing in Academy. But here it is, the confirmation. It is Ixmithy playing today on the Academy stage. This is one of the most well-known storied junglers in North America, to the surprise of many, now in Academy. Yeah, and it's not like the, the Immortals Academy roster last split was doing particularly well. They were kind of all over the place, never found their style, and even lost their coach at the end of the split. So this team is just coming into this new split without an identity, with a new coach, and now with a new jungler. So who knows what to expect out of this lineup, because we might see Xmithy just... Like, be kind of sad that he's not in the LCS signup because if you watch the Immortals announcement saying why they made those changes, well, long story short, they just scrimmed and felt like the scrim results were better with this iteration of the roster for Academy and this iteration of the roster for the LCS squad. So not a lot of info, so we'll get to see if the play actually matches what they say. Yeah, we'll see if it holds up. And on the other side of this matchup, FlyQuest Academy, during their off-season time, they picked up Big and added him to the Academy lineup. Yeah, I mean, Big was a big shot caller on Optic. He actually, on last year, and so when Immortals became took the, over the Optic spot, Big was no longer there. So he had a bit of a break, and now he's back. And this should add more direction to the lineup. Without, when JJ was there, it felt like maybe the team was not as linear in what they wanted to do. And so hopefully adding somebody that is known as a shot caller, as a strong vocal personality, should just keep the team in check. When you also have a lot of players that really need that, players like Fnatic or even Revenge that don't have that much actual team experience, well, having a guy that does will really put them in check. Okay, so last game, we talked a bit about what you thought was going to be the most exciting coming into summer. And you mentioned jungling. And we talked about carry jungling. And lucky enough, we got to see Nidalee versus Graves in the jungle. So that was super cool. But now, let's contrast this with Xmithy and what we know about Xmithy. Xmithy is known as a brain player. He's known as the guy who facilitates the rest of your team functioning to the best of their ability. He's the guy who makes sure that he's happy donating resources. If you want Xmithy to have three farm all game and literally just hand all his gold to somebody else and press CC buttons, he'll do it. He is a team player. But if the meta is going to be carry junglers, what does that mean for Xmithy? Who, let's be honest, that doesn't seem to fit his profile as well as other players. It really hasn't, but I think it hasn't more with the champions that are currently played right now. So the Graves, the Shivana, I don't think Xmithy would be playing those. Graves maybe just because of how easy he can be, but he can always be carry jungling with champions like Lee, Lee Sin. Very viable right now, very played throughout the world, and it's still quite, not, not the heavy farm style, but still strong enough to be able to skirmish and at least shut down what the other farming junglers are going to be trying to do. So I think that he can still find his way into the meta effectively, but it's more about the team. Like, what is going on through Rick Smithy's head right now? How long does he have with this team? Is he just supposed to slot in and just suddenly tell everybody what to do because the jungler that he's replacing in the academy was Potluck, who was a positional coach. So this is somebody that was a coach, then went to player, and then was like, okay, I can be a player and a coach at the same time, and now I can just be a bit more vocal. And so maybe that's what the main lineup wanted. And so who knows what Smithy's bringing to the table right now. I mean, he's going to have his team with red side, so we can see if he's the kind of player that right now wants to have that kind of authority, but Hakuho and Apollo are still in this lineup, so it's not like this is 
a weak team by any stretch of the imagination. These guys had the record for the longest played bot lane duo in the LCS, and they took a little bit of a brief stint when the Immortals lineup chose to not start Apollo, but they're back together. All right, let's see how it shakes out in the draft. It's Thresh, it's Olaf, it's Trundle, banned out by FlyQuest Academy. And Immortals, they're going to go ahead, remove Varus, Callista, and Graves. In the previous game, we saw Red Side ban Varus and Callista as well. But of course, Graves was first picked over by that blue side. Oh. Immortals Academy want to make sure they prevent that. And FlyQuest Academy will be quick to grab themselves the Syndra first and foremost. And Immortals will just snap lock that oh Ezreal. And oh, no. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh. It's the no. cat. <laughs> Okay, so before we before we panic, keep in mind, this Ezreal can be flexed. Another thing I forgot to add is that Xmithy used to be a, a marksman. He loves playing marksman, and he actually is a really good Ezreal jungle, so he can take Ezreal into the jungle. It is crazy obnoxious. He can farm well, he's just very useful, and he can be paired up with the Yumi. So there is a lot of flexing that is available for both these squads, whether it's a Syndra on mid and bottom. Most likely it is mid, and most likely it is Ezreal bottom, but you still have to consider the possibilities because it is a fresh new season, and you don't know what these teams are about yet. All right, I'll keep it in the back of my mind. I'll keep it tucked away and see if maybe that's how this plays out. Keep it peeking. Keep through. it peeking, though. Not, not completely tucked. Get a little a little stub that says, "Hey, you might want to open this." <laughs> All right. All right. We'll have it. We'll have it ready to go. It's on the back burner. As the Nautilus is picked up for FlyQuest Academy, and with Kaisa locked in, pretty much can guarantee that is going to be a mid lane Syndra there with Kaisa and Nautilus there in that bottom lane together. And Immortals Academy, they're going to go ahead. They'll pick up Lee Sin. They want to have Xmithy on a champion that he would prefer before those second round of bans come in. Yeah, taking the lead right now is big. Fnatic loves playing Lee Sin as well, and they're just going to make Xmithy's matchup a little bit easier there. But it's not going to be easy for the Ezreal and Yumi as the Nautilus Kais is basically the designated kill squad against the Ezreal. You press R, you then have your Kai'Sa press R, and he's dead. And if you have somebody else that can also facilitate that dive, whether it's that Rek'Sai or whichever next band Immortals has in mind to keep their Ezreal Yumi alive, it'll just make his life that much easier. Let's see how we're going to go about these bands, though, in the second half. It looks like because they picked their jungler up nice and early, Immortals are saying, all right, we're going to target your jungle pool a little bit harder. Now, the Rek'Sai band away, the Nidalee band out, so both junglers that we saw in game one be able to see here in game number two. Yeah, Mort Nidalee is really, really strong right now. The thing is that there's just not that many players that play it. And when you practice Nidalee on the main server, because there's ping, it's frustrating for a lot of players to get that practice down because you feel like literally every spear hits and then you play on the LCS and then everyone dodges your spears. So there's a bit of a discrepancy there that some players just don't like getting used to and so they just don't play it all together but the ones that can put up with it well they earn themselves a ban for their team and just means that they can pick champions like Nocturne which I love here we saw Cloud9 Blabber play Nocturne towards the end of the split he was highly successful with it he started getting a lot of bans the paranoia is unbelievably powerful and right now Immortals Academy lineup is just so vulnerable to this. They're all squishy and when you have Nautilus that presses delete on a single target, you know you're getting a two for one when there's a Yumi in one of them. And honestly, I really just love Nocturne against Jace because we see this champion, he's been memed to hell and back for NA Jace. North America has struggled with this champion more than pretty much every other region. And to be successful on Chase, he needs to be able to set up that split pushing kingdom. You don't pick Jace to constantly be team fighting with him. And how, my friend, are you going to set up a split pushing kingdom when this ghost is constantly ruining everything? I want to see Fnatic make life miserable for this Jace. That's how this pick is going to be successful in my opinion. Whoa, I am really loving what FlyQuest has drafted here so far, and I am not too sure about Immortals Academy. They're really all AD. There is some magic damage, of course, and you've got the, the Yumi and the Ezreal in there, but the itemization, it might be a little bit too easy for FlyQuest. You're going to have that Kai'Sa that can get that Zonia's. You've got the Nautilus that can get really tanky. The Tabis will be useful, right? There's not a lot of 
hard CC on the Immortal side, so I think that FlyQuest will have a much easier time getting the fight that they want since every single champion can get the party started. That's what we saw the Chinese teams do. They're the best in the world right now, so why not do that? It seems to work pretty well. And, man, after getting to see the way that Fudge piloted the set in game number one, I'm excited to see another one here in game number two, see if that one can be as successful as what we saw in that first matchup. Either way, between these two teams, it's going to be fun when you get to see a legend like Xmithy, one of these guys who's been a staple in North America for so long, now playing in Academy. Can he meet the someday bar? Can he break the someday bar? Can he walk into this game go in there, end it in 20 minutes, and walk away just the absolute carry of the day. That's what I want to see, and I think that's what most people want to see, seeing him in this game now. But we're stepping away for a moment. we got to build up that game delay. Once we're back, we'll have the game ready and live for y'all to go from the start. So we will catch you here in just a few minutes. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We just got done with Champion Select, as you saw before the commercial break. That break was then initiated to preserve our competitive integrity, as has been the case since we've had to move to the LCS at home type of setup. And now we're back and we're just about ready to jump into game here with Immortals Academy, going up against FlyQuest Academy. And in case you're just now joining us, the topic of the day is Xmithy and how he will be playing in this game. Xmithy with Apollo and Hakuho. So this is actually a lineup that is three-fifths of the LCS lineup from last <laughs> split, which 
you got to win, right? You really have to yeah. win if this is who you're working with. Like you have the mid jungle, the mid the jungle support synergy that is so important to so many games. You have players that have stuck around for so long. You've got a bottom lane that has played for so long together. Like they all expectations are on them to win through the bot side. You're you're dealing with FlyQuest that has a new support with a new bot lane. So that should mean that you just play to your veterans and you just win. But the compositions, I think, favor what FlyQuest have drafted so far. I really like what I see out of them. And again, I'm going back to it. If you're not a player who's had plenty of LCS time and you're not popping off in Academy, just carrying all the time, showing that you are clearly above this level of play and you need to be on the LCS stage, well, at that point in my mind, you're just the bar for somebody else to pass. You're the bar that all the young aspiring talent needs to say, I'm better than him and I deserve my shot. So you either show that you're good enough or you show other people what they need to be better than. And that's what it comes down to. And I think that's what everybody's playing here. These players in Apollo and Hakuo and Xsmithy, they need to show, hey, I don't need to be down here in Academy. I need to be up on the LCS main stage. For everybody on FlyQuest, it's about saying, hey, you want to see the next generation of North American talent. You want to see players who could be good enough to play on the LCS stage? Well, I can beat players that played on the LCS stage. That's what this comes down to for me in a league that's about building individual player talent and about showcasing these individuals. Yeah, that's really true, right? The idea that, oh, there's too many veterans. Like, well, that's the bar that you have to beat. Just beat those guys and it'll make your life a little bit easier. You have that on your resume. Like, yeah, these, every time I lane against this bot lane that's always been in LCS, I beat him every time, right? That that really goes a long ways for you to make a case as to why you need to be playing in a higher league. And what Immortals has that is a higher advantage to them right now is that this level one can be pretty powerful. You've got the Lee and Jace that can poke out a bit, but they're just gonna play it slow, play it safe, and let Xmithy start on what seems to be the red side. Lee's so good right now that he doesn't really need a leash. So he can have a, a leashless start and stay really healthy, and that could help Immortals to get Xmithy off to a very sneaky start. But that's kind of the strategy you use when you have solo lanes that just pop off when it comes to setting up your, your camp or setting up somebody else. So that's what they're going to go for, though. At least they'll keep Xmithy safe, shrouded away from vision, away from any potential leashes, and so that's going to make all the lanes tremble in fear, like, where is he going to go? What's he planning on ganking? There isn't even any wars in the river, so they just have no idea what he's up to. He has free reign to play the map however he wants. I want to see him get active early, man, because you already commented on this a little bit during Champion Select, but it's AD top, AD mid, AD jungler, AD carry, and a cat. Nobody's gonna be itemizing MR because of the Yumi. That's just not how League of Legends works. It is so easy for this front line of Set and Nautilus, even the Nocturne, to get a little bit of armor and just become so much more durable against what this Immortals roster wants to put out that if Immortals ever fall behind, if their opponents are ever afforded the opportunity to just grab some extra armor, I don't really see how Immortals wins a fight, do you? No, well, that that was the one flashback that came up when I said, yeah, they're all AD, but then I saw Yumi and then I remember, oh, she's been top of the charts of damage so many games in a row, right? She's always dealing crazy, like she, she surpasses Syndra's in damage, like how does she do it? So there is a chance that if it just goes super late and Hakubo just has an incredible game, that they do have some more damage to deal with, but Champions like Set are, and Nautilus, I think, are going to be the biggest offenders when it comes to stacking that armor, which is really the big trouble because that's going to nullify so much of the poke that Insanity can afford to get, and same thing with the damage that Xmithy and the Lauren bring to the table. So the, the snowball potential is very real when it comes to FlyQuest's side, considering they have all the setup, and Immortals is really just banking on a lot of mistakes from FlyQuest. There's no way for you to guarantee a lockdown on a single target, right? Like, Triple does not put himself in a position to be ganked here unless he makes a mistake. It's Mithy and Insanity can't really set something up against the Syndra, so they are completely banking on FlyQuest to make missteps during this early game. So, in other words, if Immortals falls behind, the win condition is 25 Magi stack you. 
Yeah, yeah, but it's a, it's a win condition that's worked before, which yeah. is kind of sad, but we've seen it happen, <laughs> and so I j I'm just having a hard time breaking away from what Yumi does so much. She's the most banned champion across multiple regions in solo queue, and for good reason. It's because she is just so annoying the more you get into the game. If somebody just skips their build path, and like, oh, you know what, I'm snowballing, I don't need to get healing reduction. Surprise, you lost a fight because Yumi just healed somebody to crazy heights. Like, the Yumi Aatrox combination is insane. Remember that oh, Aatrox that's is disgusting. passive, oh, that's just worse. for some reason amplifies all healing? So Yumi also gets to be healing him for more. A little bit of trade up here between Alorum and Revenge. I mean, they both take a little bit of damage, but nothing really worth writing home about. If Smithy's here, because Alorum's all the way shoved up, all he wants to do is shadow this, make sure that Alorum's able to shove that wave all the way under turret, make it so Revenge isn't able to freeze this, and then if Smithy can instantly head home, he'll just go ahead, shop up, grab that challenging smite, so he's more of a threat there in the jungle. But of course, trying to duel a Nocturne, should he run into him, is going to be very difficult, considering Nocturne does have that lethal tempo. Pretty much means he's going to win the 1v1. But we're not getting to see the super early tower dive that we got to see in game one, man. We're not getting to see that level three first blood this time around. I'm a little bit disappointed. Yeah, kind of sad. Alorum saw it. He saw the first game. He's like, maybe I don't do that this time around. So he was really healthy by the time that it happened. And so the Nocturne is, I think, a lot harder to pull off those dives. Although we have seen some teams in the past be able to pull off level one to level three tower dives with a Nocturne jungle. So it's definitely doable, but one that unless you have the utmost confidence that you are going to pull this off and you've practiced it a bunch, you just don't bother it. When you have a composition that just says, yeah, we're just going to hit our spikes and then there's nothing that the enemy team can do. Like when Nocturne is level six, that's when the danger really begins. Any stun that gets thrown out from these lanes that connects can be followed up by Fnatic and that's just gonna get you a kill. Like a set ultimate, the Syndra, the Scatter, everything has to be really tracked. And so Xmithy's job isn't so much about finding Fnatic, you want a ward to expect his routes and then counter gank it because that's really the best thing you can try to do in that situation because if, if you just go for your regular ganks, the Nocturne counter gank is even more lethal. Right. And as the Nocturne, the counterpoint to this whole thing of Nocturne's insane level 6 power and just how effective this is, is if he messes it up, if he decides to use that ulti and he's 50 units out of range and doesn't get to fly at somebody, or if he goes for the play and doesn't account for a stopwatch or something similar, the champion feels like he's falling far behind by not making these ultis work. Nocturne's not a hyperscaler. He's not something that's going to dominate late game team fights. So getting these early ultis off successfully is so critical for him to find what he's looking for in snowballing not only himself but his team as well. And Immortals are now going to grab themselves the first Drake of the game just like last time around. It's a Mountain Drake first, but it's Ocean Drake second as Nocturne goes into the bottom lane what? looking to find the dive. And there's what I'm talking about. Yes, they use the Nocturne ulti. But they end up getting Apollo's Flash what? and Hakuo's Heal. So that's two summoners. Look at mid, Flowers. Cost big Look at mid. There is a Syndra with a Jace that has no exhaust and is at under half HP. There was a much better option to gank there for, for Fnatic. And so that's going to really hurt because, you, you know, another reason why you want to get those Snowball Ultimates is that you're running Ultimate Hunter. You really want to be participating in those kills early on so that you can start stacking that in. Now he's going to have to wait so long before he gets that up. And at least if he tries for bottom lane again, he can have the Nautilus Ultimate to follow up on. But that was just not a well thought out gank out of... FlyQuest. I think there, there were much better choices, and now they're going to pay big time for it as Xmithy's going to get a nice little blue buff, and there's nothing Fnatic can do about it. Fnatic just walking over towards the mid lane. Let's see if maybe he finds the gank opportunity onto Insanity here. This will turn into a 2v2, make it a 3v2. Oh, Insanity. He's in a pretty rough spot as Fnatic will look to maybe chase this one down. Xmithy going to be eating a lot of damage here. Big's rotation really just changing how this fight went as First Blood will go over to Fnatic and the Nocturne is on the board. That was huge from Big. That's that shot calling, right? Just being very proactive and thinking about what do I need to do on the map? Where is action happening? 
the second they thought that Xmithy was there, he started rotating over and then it was lights up for Insanity, who now is in a really tough spot because without Flash, and now you got Syndra with her own Flash as well, you are 100% Killable. They can even dive you 100 zero under the tower. The exhaust is not going to be up before their ultimates are available. So this is a window for FlyQuest to start snowballing and one that Immortals really needs to defend. Immortals feeling all right where they are right now. I mean, not feeling great considering things went badly with that mid lane play, but it's still only a one kill game. They're nine minutes in. They've got that early Drake, but they got to watch out for plays like these where big catch is off guard. Where is the kick used? So the kick, okay. So I think he, he maybe was hoping he could get a, a double kick on them, but the second Insanity was in that direction, he knew he was out because when he kicks Fnatic that way, there's no place for Insanity to really run safely. He has to go back into the enemy side. Mash is gonna go ahead and build this gold lead even higher up there in the bottom side, grabbing himself some plates. 1,000 gold lead here, 10 minutes into the side of FlyQuest Academy. Remember, there is one Drake for the side of Immortals. So, the Nocturne getting one kill. Okay, Crumbs. So, both of these junglers are junglers that want to make some early plays. They want to get involved and make things happen early on because you're not drafting Nocturne or Lee Sin to be a late game powerhouse. This isn't like a Sejuani or a Jarvan or something. So, what do you consider the level of success for either of these junglers by the time we get to say. 20 minutes? Do you want to see two kill participation, three kill participation? Like, how do you measure, was this pick worthwhile? Because right now, Fnatic has the only kill on the board, and Xmithy's still 0-0-0. Zero, zero, zero. So, I, I will first of all say that Nocturne always brings something to the table. His paranoia is just an incredible ability when you have this much engaged. Like, this is a perfect Nocturne comp for him, so everything lines up with him being able to deny the vision or even deny teleports. Like, that's a big thing. You can't use that TP when the paranoia is out. So I think that he's always going to be useful and he's going to be wanting more about that late, uh, sorry, mid game. Successful mid game for him? I think he's looking at like a few kills, just a few spread out kills on the laners that have the easiest time. So whether it's killing insanity a little bit more, getting a dive down bottom when you can get some plates and maybe even a turret, like that's really all you're asking for with the Nocturne, to kill your champions and on the side lanes to make sure that you did, you create a man advantage that is quickly or get a counter gank and then get a few snowball leads. Whereas for Lee Sin, you really just want to try to get as much as possible early, like really as much going, but you don't want to overforce it because you do fall behind. So Xmithy did the right thing, which was just farming or, and getting that dragon, but the rest of the team doesn't really have any setup. So he's going to inevitably be a slower farmer than what Fnatic can do with the Nocturne. And so he's going to have a really tough time because it's going to be all about his mechanics and creativity right now. The only way he keeps up the value is just getting crazy picks using vision to find a way to blindside your opponent and then sneak it in now i'm just thinking about uh Karsus not uh, at least in right now which is a really high standard for what i want to see but yeah that's, that's the one that's the guy that's making it work right now well hey even if it is a high standard it's always good to set those set those goals really high it's like that classic uh cliche motivational poster thing about aiming for the moon, so even if you miss, you land in the stars, but the stars are actually made for the moon, so it doesn't make any sense anyway. Thank but, you. But... Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I always thought that. I was like, wait a minute, aren't this... Like, someone's telling me there's stars way farther. Like, why would I not aim <laughs> yeah, for like them? The moon's way closer than all the stars, dude. Oh, uh, but hey, that was that stuff... Uh, if I remember, that was like the stuff that was popular on MySpace back in the day. That's back, people who thought that it was a good idea to have a social media profile that played a loud song whenever you visited the page also used that quote. So it's no surprise there's not a lot of sound reasoning. Oh, I but never got into, into MySpace. I, I was too late for that. I, I was all about those chat rooms where you have the dumb avatars to chat with, and now I'm back at it again with VR, so it's the same thing. <laughs> Chat rooms with dumb avatars. There's, hey, it's not about the song on the page. If there's not a dumb avatar, it just doesn't work. I can respect that. You're a man who knows exactly what kind of content he's after. Yeah, you know what? Like, you just gotta embrace it. At some point, it's like, ah, who cares? This is what I like. <laughs> That's what life's all about, man. You go through, like, your teenage years 
thinking about how you gotta conform, you gotta do what's cool, you gotta do what's popular, and then eventually you hit a point in your life where you know where you're like, you know what? I don't wanna play Ari. I don't wanna play Zen. I wanna be a purple scorpion that has a crappy Q ability that does 28 damage at level one. And that's who I am, and I'm a cool with that. I'm surprised you mentioned only the Q as the crappy ability. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man, don't do me. <laughs> Oh man, poor Oh well, I'm Power following my heart, time. man. I'm following my heart. And FlyQuest are following their heart, and it's put them at a spot where they're up almost 2,000 gold here in this game. We're just about 15 minutes in. We're even on Drake's. Apollo's about to close in a little bit of that gold cap, I think, try to make things a little bit more even. But I'm still just waiting for this to turn a little bit more, more violent. I mean, it's one turret to one, sure. But we still only got one kill on the board. 15 minutes in. That is not they're, enough kills. They're playing cat and mouse. Immortals is just running away from FlyQuest. Are the they cat and the mouse both they can't asleep? Do anything. Because they're not going after anything, man. I got a Nocturne and a Lee. If That's these junglers true. were Sejuani and also Sejuani because it's blind pick, maybe. It, maybe. It does both of Sejuani's like were afraid that. of each other and only wanted to farm. But Nocturne and Lee, I need to see more blood than this. I need to see more kills by 15 minutes into the game. I want to see some aggro gameplay. Hey, I think we're about to get it though. Look at this. Oh, they're hunting Nick Smithy. Here comes the oh, boy. Oh, he's about to die. Yep. He's so dead. This, this isn't just Nick Smithy. This is Nick Smithy with a loot pinata attached. If they're able to find the kill, they're going to get plenty of money. But instead, it may be turned around here. Nick Smithy going to be terminated as the Yumi will abandon ship in time. Hawkwell makes it over to Apollo, but that is second kill of the game now for FlyQuest Academy. That's a kill on to Ix Smithy, which means they don't have the jungler available if FlyQuest wants to go after this Rift Herald, and it looks like Fnatic is already on. Oh, Flowers, this is crazy. How many Ix Smithy, how many titles is it 51? I think he's one of, like, might be the number two most LCS title jungler playing here and having a really rough time. Yeah, it's, it's a little rough. It's not exactly what you would hope for in the first Academy game that we're getting to see him in, but this hey, the game's not what I thought 2020 would look like. <laughs> I don't think 2020's <laughs> been what anybody thought it would look like. Not just because Xmithy's having a bad first game in Academy, you know? Oh, man. I, I just, just kind of I always for the course. think back to, like, your New Year's, like, just throwing throwing your, your cup and cheering. Like, to 2020, all these things are going to be wishing. It's like... Yeah, How little the, all know? the this is my year posts yeah. on, on Twitter and Reddit. I want to travel. My 2020 resolution, <laughs> travel the world. <laughs> yeah, life life comes at you fast, man. It's comes at you it, like Nocturne, just blindsides you and you're feared and you're like, oh God, what's happening? Well, hopefully for FlyQuest, they can keep trying to make some big plays with that Nocturne. But for Immortals, they'd like to shut that down, man. They got 30 seconds until the next Drake is alive. They're still down a little bit of gold, so it's not that bad, though. We got Umbral Glaive on Jace, which is, I think a lot of times, this item doesn't get talked about enough for how busted it is in terms of vision score. Like, not only is this thing the lowest price point for a fully completed lethality item to give you that extra oomph when you go for your burst, but this thing has just an absolutely nutty vision score component. Uh -oh. As now we're going to see the vision get blacked out. Fanatic's going in. We're going to start to fight off. And ladies and gentlemen, Ix Smithy has left the building. Fanatic taking the kill credit on that one. But Big is below half HP. Immortals seeing if there's anything they can do here. But they are down a man. Big tries to reinitiate. But man, he has got to be here. Got to be careful. Oh, His name might be big, but the health bar is small. The damage goes out, but there comes your stopwatch. Ladies and gentlemen, big with the big baits. Trying to bring all of Immortals in here to their doom. Insanity burning away now to the Ignite. Fanatic will splat that cat, and Insanity will live with just a sliver of HP. It is all coming up Fly Quest Academy. That's here. just a misplay, Flowers. Insanity had the perfect angle on Big. They had vision, the enemy did not have vision on him, and he just misses the shock blast, and that will bought enough time for Big to use his stopwatch, who keeps Finding Lee Sin, they just press ultimate on him, Nocturne goes in, and he dies. And without the jungler, you can't contest the dragon. And if your poke's not hitting, forget about getting them off the objective. So the execution from FlyQuest is really simple. It's just what the, the champions that they drafted are built to do. And 
they are doing it really well as Immortals is just scrambling to figure out how to make this comp work. You said it last game, man. I'm just going to repeat your words. If you have a poke comp, <laughs> you got to hit the poke. If you're not hitting the poke, why do you have the comp? What does the comp do without the poke? You know, so many times I've thought that teams should have an analyst on their roster that just has almost no idea about the game so that you can always <laughs> run the strategies past them and they can say yes or no so you can have a strategy and he'd be like hmm so every really every it. team like, needs a designated yeah redditor. A, an iron analyst to be like are you is, is that your best player them. it's like no not your best player <laughs> I, I would play with my best player i'd make a strategy around him and you're like oh oh we forgot to do that and it's like oh i feel like did you guys try to win it's like oh no we weren't thinking about that we, we were trying not to lose thank you for reminding us so as long as you have that guy just covering all the weaknesses then you can make sure that everybody else stays focused. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. You know what? I can get behind that. He'd be your cheapest coach or analyst, too. <laughs> get part-time <laughs> job. Uh, well, maybe maybe you're on to something, my friend. We'll have to see if this becomes a trend here in the future. Teams just keep finding these similar problems down the line. But Shelly's summoned up here in the top lane. We'll see if she's able to get a charge off here onto this Tier 2 turret. She was summoned a pretty long way away. So we'll see what happens with that one. Lorem should be able to stop this before it results in an actual turret take. Although, I believe you can see just on the minimap, based on the state of that turret, yeah. She was able to get the headbutt off, but that's it. Well, uh, it looks like Immortal is just running away from the potential long-range engage of FlyQuest. And will concede their mid-tier too, so things are just opening up further for FlyQuest. And that could not be worse of a turret to lose because now even going to Baron to ward up as we're at the 20 minute mark becomes a complete nightmare. Literally, the, the Nocturne can just engage on you from the second you exit your base. And with Kai'Sa, once she completes that Rage Blade, that is when the Baron threat really begins. And I believe she has it right now. Oh yeah, FlyQuest is so close to just breaking this game wide open. It's it's looking like the light is fading a little bit here from Immortal's chances. I mean, yes, Yumi's got the Grail, so we're going to see some super-powered heals come out if he's able to get some good stacks off of that. Fnatic showing up now. They're looking to catch out Xmithy here once more. Paranoia is going to be dropped. Fnatic flying in. He is exhausted. Yumi looking to make the disengage as Alorum tries to fight in the back line, but he's just not fed enough. He's going to be tanking so much damage, but he will fall. Shutdown also going over as triple gets knocked out there by Xmithy. That's still going to be a two-for-one in favor of FlyQuest Academy. Yes, Immortals finally get themselves on the board, but at the cost of yet another lost fight. And more money in the pockets of these FlyQuest players that are just making the plays. They tried the same thing again on Xmithy, but he's picked up on what FlyQuest is doing. So he had the ward hop, he even flashed, and then they had a Yumi to get in there. But they still engaged and ended up winning that fight. So... It, it just shows you how tough it is for the Immortal Lion to actually do something here. And they don't even have enough to deal with the simple wave clear that FlyQuest has. So they are still unable to take down that mid-tier one. And it is looking uh, very dire here, FlyQuest, for, sorry, for Immortals. And let's see how this actually went out. So Flash Ultimate flashes away. Go, look at that. Nocturne into four people because there's a Yumi there. So... He's lucky that he has Flash to get out, but unfortunately for Aloran, he TP's right into a Kai'Sa that is fully stacked for the Rage Blade right next to a Nautilus. So there was just no chance for him to trade. What should have been a one-for-one one ends up being just his own death. That's just what happens with Paranoia. You actually can't get very good TP's because you're just looking for the thing that you can get on as quickly as possible. And, well, it just so happens that you don't have enough time to judge where the fight is going. Immortals, 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 LCS players or not, they are all aboard the struggle bus here in this game. 23 minutes in, 4,500 gold down, up against that Kai'Sa, stacking towards the Muramana, already has that Rage Blade completed like you said, and now we might get to see that another fight here in the mid lane, my friend. Triple won't get the stun. Shock Blast will find the mark on Big, but I mean, considering the armor he has, it didn't really do a lot. Now they're looking for that next side. Here it goes. Goodbye, Ezreal. 
There comes your Nautilus ulti down onto the enemy AD carry. They're dog piling in. It's Fnatic on a rampage. It's the Ezreal already out of the picture. Triple taking the kill onto Xmitty. Alorum stands oh. alone. Ladies and gentlemen, what's he supposed to do? World in there? No thanks. The damage goes out. The cat goes down. A double kill for Triple. And FlyQuest just make this look too easy. It is easy. It is so easy. They just press R on Ezreal, and he's got nowhere to run. This is the comp that was built to take him down the second they committed to that, and they had the Syndra. They knew what they could run. They're going to split themselves up there so strong, they can take both Barret and Dragon simultaneously, and it's just there's no way to disengage. You, it's just not a good comp out of the Mortals lineup, so it's just what happens when you don't have that much time with the roster to really figure out what is what. He's gonna well, at least have a pretty good TP there, though. Take a take yeah. a three leash on the Cloud Drake, so they do get something for it. But unfortunately, even Insanity misses that one on the still target. So I let's take another look at how the there. fight started off here with Apollo just not in a spot this defensible at all. He's so unlucky too that he shifts into the team with the Nautilus ultimate, so then everybody pays for his arcane shift, and then it just so easy for Kai'Sa to follow up on that because keep in mind paranoia is going on this entire time so they have no idea where anybody is Kai'Sa can just practically be invisible the whole time during the fight and you just are impervious to, to hitting her so it's just a really good composition out of Flyquest that it only take one more fight for them to seal the deal here because Immortals is just completely stranded on an island here with no no supplies, and people have already checked. They, they've said there's nothing. It's worse than no one's come the, to the save you. The plane flew they've over, the ships passed by. Yeah. It's done, dude. It's done. Immortals are... I would be incredibly surprised if Immortals found any way back into this game. There is no Magi's on the Yumi. Two items completed on the Ezreal. You got two lethality items completed on your Jace, but considering the armor already on the opponents, it's ninja tabbies across the board for your three melee champions here. Gargoyle stone plate done for the Nautilus. You can see chain vest, bramble vest, all sorts of vests, man, just all over the place here for these frontliners, and there's just no way to burst through that with how far behind this team is. 8K, 25 minutes in. Even if you're not an all AD comp, that is scary. And in this situation, I just don't see it. FlyQuest, they're looking to march down the mid lane. Let's see how fast it can sit. Fly even has a great comp to 131. It's not even the Noctune that's on the side. It's actually the Kai'Sa that's so easy to, it's so safe to join the fight and also provide pressure on the tower because Noctune would typically be unable to hit that, but Kai'Sa can poke you down, can actually be really pesky from this distance. So it's a good setup for them. And now the top is crashing as well. It's just a matter of time for them to break all three of these lanes as Insanity is already Oom here and will not be able to defend mid. Out of mana Jace is not the most threatening thing in the game of League of Legends. Big finds himself a little far forward compared to the rest of his team being able to maybe help him. But he's not really worried about it. Immortals is not in a spot where initiating on Big is going to be the play that was hopes going to fight victory here. So they know that they're just going to have to hang back a little bit. Revenge continuing to mount his side lane pressure up here to the top side. There goes Fnatic looking to find that dive onto Insanity. Manages to get the exhaust out of the enemy mid laner and takes that as the opportunity to back away, not wanting to overcommit. Speaking of committing, here we go. Apollo nearly taken down, but not going to be sent all the way until Revenge goes after the kill. Alorum going to be the next to fall as Insanity goes there after. Nick Smithy tries to find something, anything. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not a damn thing as Fnatic is unstoppable. Revenge gets a triple kill, and FlyQuest will put Immortals in the dirt. 27 minutes in. We had one kill 15 minutes into this game. In 12 minutes, FlyQuest yeah. managed to grab themselves another 14 kills and end the entirety of the game going straight to the Nexus. This team has a pretty strong start here in Academy Summer 2020. Oh yeah, FlyQuest loved what I saw out of them. The draft, the execution, like everything just made sense. Very aggressive, but you love to see it. It's the first game of the split, but to contrast that, Flowers, oh boy, what is happening in the Immortals camp? Because you had one kill with three-fifths of your LCS roster in Academy against a team that's struggled. Last season, not looking good.
That ain't it, my friend. Immortals are definitely going to have some drawings to do back at the old drawing board here once they have to go back <laughs> watch the VOD of that one. There's a lot to improve on, but hey, FlyQuest, you got to be happy with it. It was a little slow in the beginning, I'm not going to lie. The game felt like it didn't really have a lot going on for those first 15 minutes, but once FlyQuest found their momentum, they were able to just go all the way to the finish line with it. It was a fun second half of the game to watch here for this team. And now that we have concluded that second game of the day, we are going to toss to commercial here once again. But we'll catch you on the other side for the third game of the day in just three short minutes.